your first alert five weather with Sam Schreier. Good morning, everyone. We've got red flag warnings across the western slopes of Colorado, actually back to Nevada, up into Wyoming. It's, it's just a very dry situation out west, and unfortunately, that's right where two very intense fires are burning, the Pine Gulch and the Grizzly Creek. Now, this photo uh, kind of started the trend around yesterday, and I contacted Whitewater Rafting. If we could share this around, and they said, of course. So the fire kind of quickly grew so aggressive that when they were taking some of their raft tours, they kind of had to go right by it around safely. So this was one of the photos taken there. Uh, weirdly iconic in a way you don't want to see of Colorado. Now we also have this photo pyrocumulus clouds. Have you ever heard of that? That's a fire that essentially has that smoke billow up and kind of turns into its own cloud cover with that smoke in general just spreading out from the Pine Gulch fire, which is the much more large and dominant fire. That fire is about 18 miles north and west of Grand Junction, north and east, excuse me. It's at 42,000 acres, just a little bit over. It grew about 10 to 12,000 acres from yesterday. And the Grizzly Creek fire by Glenwood Springs, by Glenwood Canyon, is about 3,200 acres. Still not much for containment there. And as Ira and Bree have mentioned, I 70 is still closed. The detour is massive. The official detour takes you down to Highway 50 and then back around the mountains essentially. So if you got to travel west today, give yourself a ton of time. Temperatures this morning are in the 50s and 60s out there. We know today's big story is the heat. I've got us going into the 90s and Colorado Springs triple digits from Pueblo out east. If we have time for traffic, we'll show it, but otherwise we do have a little bit more left in the show, about an hour left. Platte, Nevada is open, everybody. It was closed yesterday, but it's back open today after the resurfacing. Stick with us for another hour. You're watching KOAA News 5 today with Ira Cronin, Bree Groves, and Sam Schreier with weather. You're watching KOAA News 5 today, always watching out for you. 6-11 and breaking overnight. That investigation underway right now following a deadly officer involved shooting in Pueblo. News 5's Jessica Bretto joining us live with what we know so far this morning. Jessica. Hey, Brian. Good morning, everyone. So what we know so far is one woman is dead following that officer involved shooting involving Pueblo police officers here along 15th Street in Pueblo. Now you can see 80 or 15th Street is still closed between AD Avenue and Graham Avenue here. Here's what we know so far. Pueblo police officers were involved in a shooting uh, overnight with an armed female suspect in a home invasion here on West 15th Street. According to the department, there was a 911 call about a woman entering a home just after 10 o'clock last last night. Everyone except an elderly man was able to get out the home safely. It's still not known how long officers were on scene before the woman reportedly came out of the home and refused officer commands to drop her weapon. Three officers fired at the woman who died at the scene. Now the names of the persons involved have not been released yet pending an investigation from the coroner's office and uh, law enforcement does plan on releasing the name of the officers involved as well at a later date. Now, uh, we do want to mention that this is the sixth officer involved shooting in Pueblo so far this year. We'll keep you posted on any updates we get out here. Always watching out for you, Pueblo, Jessica Barreto, News 5. All right, thank you, Jessica. Let's check your healthy family. Digital eye strain was an issue even before the pandemic, and it's even a bigger one now with most kids spending more time on devices and learning virtually. Doctors say the 2020 rule can help out. So here's how that works. After every 20 minutes of screen time, they need to look away from the screen and focus their attention at least 20 feet away for 20 seconds. That will allow children to adapt their eyes to an environment with technology, says Dr. David Hunter. He's the chair of ophthalmology at Boston's Children's Hospital. That simulates more what happens in a normal classroom or a normal office environment is you're looking around, you're taking a break, you're not just locked in during lockdown on this screen. You can reduce screen time by setting timers, taking breaks, playing outside, and parents modeling healthy behavior with devices. Happening now, more companies trying out that four-day work week, either to avoid some layoffs or to create a better work-life balance for people working from home. Elephant Ventures, it's a software company that started testing employees working four 10-hour days, a move to help employee morale and parents who are dealing with childcare and remote learning. 
I think you still have the age old conversation of if it's 40 hours compressed into four days, you still have, you know, how much productivity are you actually getting in a 10 hour workday? Some HR experts say schedule flexibility could be key to attracting new workers in the future. Sam Schreier, yeah, that yeah, did you hear that contract's coming saying? up. <laughs> I was saying that would be my actual dream is to be able to do Monday through Thursday yeah. and have three weekdays off. I would happily do that. Bosses, if you're awake and listening. So here's the deal. We've got some big heat from yesterday that we are going to keep around over the next few days. Lamar, La Hunta, Pueblo all hit triple digits yesterday. Surrounding areas in the plains, very hot Highway 50, a hot corridor of Colorado. Uh, Trinidad, 97 degrees, Springfield 96 and about 96 through Colorado Springs. Now, currently, we're seeing a very pretty sunrise this morning. I think there's a little bit of haze out there, but there's also a lot of fog that developed towards northeast El Paso County. Falcon to Calhan and out near Peyton, only a few hundred yards to maybe close to a mile visibility, but everyone else isn't that bad. It's 59 degrees, but the humidity is kind of high. In Pueblo, yeah, again, I think just a, a little bit of fog, almost some cloud cover kind of off to the distance, but Pueblo, we are clear. It's 63 degrees. And let's take a look around. So way out and then coming in for the dew points. The reason that we have some fog develop is storms in Kansas that are pretty much done in Nebraska through moisture all the way back to Springs, Pueblo touched over to Fremont County, but spread east. That moisture just didn't climb up towards the Raton Mesa very well. And I can see this on our model. Yesterday, storms out east at the top of the loop, we'll see it, pushed this moisture boundary all the way south. There it goes down the interstate. But that energy, that moisture just kind of washed out by Walsenburg Trinidad. So we're going to dry some of this humidity out because we're under a hot pressure or high pressure area of hot air. Dry flow comes through Colorado and it's not moving anywhere. Our upper level modeling helps show heat ridge just here to stay through Thursday and then this is out to Friday. Yes, a little cooler air tries to swing down. It just doesn't do a whole lot of work. So today we're hot temperatures in the 90s, 96 in the spring, 101 Pueblo. But tomorrow might actually be the hottest day of the week. Just a touch warmer by a couple degrees. Let's go to traffic. This is a look at I-25 in North Academy. And oh, that's cool. So here's what's going on up in the mountains and the foothills. That moisture we talked about got pushed across El Paso County and then condensed out in that narrow little layer right against the mountains and foothills. Traffic wise, it's fine, but you have something cool to look at when you look at the mountains west. In our traffic network, Colorado Springs out through town. Very pretty this morning on that drive. The drive itself is great and your drive time to Denver is not bad at all at about 48 minutes. Guys, over to you. Let's check your election watch now this Wednesday morning. Joe Biden and his newly selected running mate will prepare for their first joint in-person appearance today. Meanwhile, reaction to the choice of Senator Kamala Harris of California as VP has been swift and strong, including from President Trump, NBC Scott McFarlane, covering the race from D.C. The historic announcement was made electronically. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris spoke by Zoom. Then the former vice president tweeted, Harris is a fearless fighter for the little guy and one of the country's finest public servants. Fellow Democrats say Harris's record and her experience in Democratic primary debates will boost a Biden campaign that's already consistently leading in the polls. Beating Donald Trump gets us out of a valley. It does not get us to the mountaintop. Right. But Biden-Harris, they can help us get to the mountaintop. About an hour after the announcement, President Trump criticized the choice. She's a big tax raiser. She's a big... Uh, slasher of funds for our military. Plus, she was very, very nasty. Kamala Harris ran for president by rushing to the radical left. The Trump campaign pinned a video criticizing the selection to his Twitter page. Senator Harris's four years in the U.S. Senate included high-profile questioning of then-Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. So that's where the federal government must step the, in. The that's why we have and her run for the Democratic presidential nomination included sharp criticism of her new running mate. Let me take this opportunity to welcome her to the race. And she'll spar this fall with Vice President Mike Pence in a primetime debate. There will be a great team. She will do a great job counterpunching Donald Trump. The swinging from both sides has already begun. Scott McFarlane, NBC News, Washington. Right now, the U.S. is responding to Russia's claim that it's created the world's first coronavirus vaccine, and they're calling it Sputnik V. 
Russian President Vladimir Putin says it is safe and effective, but many in the scientific community do fear that Russia may have cut essential corners in its development by not fully completing the traditional clinical trial protocols and not releasing any data. Virtually any vaccine can trigger a short-term response, but getting that long-term response, which is what we really need, that is a complete unknown for this Russian vaccine. The point is not to be first with a vaccine. The point is to have a vaccine that is safe and effective. Right now, the U.S. is on track to have a vaccine ready sometime early next year. In fact, here in the U.S., the first company to begin those clinical trials on a coronavirus vaccine was Moderna. They're now in phase three of testing. The Department of Health and Human Services is paying Moderna one and a half billion dollars to produce and deliver 100 million doses of this potential vaccine. Hasn't been approved by the FDA yet, but it is already being manufactured. So if it is approved, that way it can be rolled out very quickly. A tech company founded by Tesla CEO Elon Musk could make a mood changing announcement later this month. A company called Neuralink hopes to develop a microchip that could change a person's mood. Doctors would implant it inside the brain and then the chip would send out waves beyond the natural frequency. Developers hope the technology could help people alleviate stress and anxiety or even help people with severe spinal cord injuries to walk or even deal with blindness. Wow, 621, wanna give you that live look outside in Colorado Springs. The skies do look kinda hazy out there this morning. Remember, we have two big fires burning across Colorado. Of course, we're gonna have more on that throughout the show as well as some breaking news happening in Pueblo this morning and your forecast when we come after the break. Colorado is your first alert five weather with Sam Schreier. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to step off in a second, but I just kind of wanted to keep showing. We don't have a good camera out by Falcon, but we do have one kind of up around Monument Hill that wasn't showing a whole lot of difference, but this kind of showed from our studio. There's a lot of dense fog that's building into the northeast corner of Colorado Springs, but really out towards Falcon. So for those of you kind of commuting on Highway 24 in and out of town to and through Falcon, you're going to notice pretty dense fog and limited visibility in that region. Uh, really quickly here, this is our monument camera, so no problems on Monument Hill. And also, what a gorgeous view, all those clouds out to the summit. So we're out to the sky. Let's take a look into our seven day forecast. I want to help prep you for the rest of the week. We are at Wednesday. We are going to be up around records. 94 is the record. So if we hit my high of 96, we beat it today. And then the next two days, we either tie or we just get very close to it. So record heat, kind of the big forecast story for Southern Colorado for the next three days. A uh, touch cooler Saturday, a really low rain chance there. Sunday is the better rain chance, maybe a smaller a smaller chance of an impact storm. And then uh, just isolated chances Monday, Tuesday. Unfortunately, from Saturday through Monday and Tuesday, we see a chance of rain in every seven day. It's, they're just bad chances. So like Monday, I, I've got us dry in Pueblo. I need to take that impact scale off. But Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday, those are the chances of rain. Sunday's the best chance, but Pueblo, it's, it's kind of a low one. So we will hope for some moisture, but it's August, guys. We just, we tend to be a little drier mid to late August unless monsoon season is really good. It's just not that way this year. Hot through Canyon City, low storm chances over the weekend. Sunday's kind of my target date for something. And then we go to Woodland Park, a slightly better chance over the next four days, some Saturday through Tuesday for rain, but still even Woodland Park, few and far between full of storms. So we've got to be real careful out in the mountains around Southern Colorado West. Okay, let's go to traffic. North Academy, very beautiful for that view. Uh, the mountains a little bit more obscured from that cloud cover, but a lot of that is high up. Just kind of that condensation collecting in the foothills. Traffic wise, things are well spaced out. We've been showing that all morning. The drive times are great, as is the traffic around town. Let's go to Jessica this morning and see what updates she has for us. One woman is dead following an officer-involved shooting here in Pueblo. This is the scene along 15th Street. I'll tell you more about what we know in this investigation coming up right after the break. Trust. Always watching out for you. This is KOAA News 5 Today. A good Wednesday morning. Glad you're waking up with us on News 5 Today. I'm Ira Cronin. Bree, three days in now, and we got a busy news morning. Oh, my goodness. It is crazy today. And let me tell you, adjusting to the sleep schedule is... <laughs> 
hard enough when you're used to it, let alone when you're not. But we were just looking out the window and seeing some fog out there this morning. And Sam, I had a lot of moisture on the grass and windshield. Yeah, we had a lot of that dew point action. It's racing across the springs right now. So we'll pull up some more cameras in a little bit. I do want to touch on something a little drier, which is the western slope of Colorado. Red flag warnings are in effect. We've got that low level moisture again, just spreading and racing across El Paso County right now. It was super foggy and Falcon, but now a lot of Colorado Springs is seeing that fog kind of run to the interstate. I'm literally watching it come across pulpit rock to our studio, and um, that's probably still the case over some of the plains. Temperatures are cool in El Paso County, so that's why our fog is collecting. We've got temperatures that will get very warm. We have this fog this morning. It'll get out of the way fairly quickly mid morning, and heat is the big story. 